Hello students, welcome to your first video of this year. Uh, it is titled 2.1 Properties of Similar Polygons. And what you need to do is make sure you check Edmodo to see what page in your composition book you're going to be taking notes on. And I want to make sure that with this first video we give a lot of explanation about exactly what you're going to write down and everything in these notes so that you can make sure you understand everything that you need to know for class tomorrow. So properties of similar polygons. What I've done is I've drawn two triangles that are similar. So what I'd like for you to do is to take a couple of seconds to draw these two triangles. One is ABC and one is triangle EFG. And you'll notice that they are not exactly the same size. Okay, Triangle ABC is bigger than triangle EFG. But something you will notice is that their angles are the same. I've got a box here and a box here, which you'll remember means that it's a 90 degree angle. So these are two right triangles. So angle B is exactly the same measure as angle F. And you'll see that angle A in the big triangle has one loop on it, which matches to the one loop on angle E. And that's important to know because that's how we know that those two angles are what we call corresponding. Corresponding angles are angles that have the exact same measurement, and we can identify them by the one loop. Now you'll notice down here that on our third angle, angle C and angle G, they both have two loops on them. That signifies that they are the same, but it also says that they're different than E and A. Okay, Two loops means that those two angles are corresponding so that they are exactly the same measurement. Okay, Because here's something that you need to write down. Similar polygons. The definition of similar polygons is polygons that are the same shape but different sizes. And I'm going to put a semicolon, okay? Because there's more to write. The corresponding angles are congruent and in parentheses, I'll put equal, because congruent means equal. And the corresponding sides are proportional. I'll say that one more time while you're writing it down. Similar polygons. Polygons that are the same shape, but different sizes. Corresponding angles are congruent or equal. I forgot an L on there. And the corresponding sides are proportional. Okay? So just like we said, the corresponding angles, angle B and angle F are corresponding. They're two angles, excuse me, they're one angle from each uh, polygon that are in the same position, and we identified them by the box, which lets us know they're 90 degrees. Of course, uh, angles A and E are also corresponding angles, and we can identify that with the loop. And angles C and G are corresponding. We can, angle that, we can identify that by the two loops. Okay? So it's important that you understand this definition, that they have corresponding angles that are congruent and corresponding sides that are proportional, because we're going to need that proportional part to find missing sides of similar polygons. So now I've got these exact same triangles that we used before for the definition, but I added some measurements for the lengths of the sides. Now we know that the measurements are not going to be the same for both triangles because they're different sizes. But we also know based on our definition that the lengths of the sides of similar polygons are proportional. So we just have to set up a proportion to figure out what the missing side is. Now I'm given a side of four and eight on one triangle. Now this empty side down here doesn't matter. And I'm given a side of three and y on the smaller triangle. 
So we need to set up a proportion that lets me know which sides are corresponding and helps me find the missing side, okay? So I'm gonna start with the two sides that I know, the two corresponding sides that, are know, that I know. Well, it looks like AB is corresponding to EF, so I can set that up as my, the first part of my proportion. So I'm gonna put four over three because four is from the larger triangle and three is from the smaller triangle, okay? So I know that my larger triangle is on top and my smaller triangle is on the bottom. So the other side from the larger triangle is eight and it corresponds to the missing side over here, which is y. So I would set up the proportion four over three equals eight over y. And now you remember from last year and the year before how to solve a proportion, and that is by cross multiplying and dividing, okay? So I'm gonna take the two that I can cross multiply, eight times three, which is 24, and divide it by the leftover number, which is four. So I have 24, or eight times three, equals 24 divided by 4 which equals 6 so y equals 6 another way to set that up would be cross multiply 3 times 8 equals 4 times y 8 times 3 is 24 equals 4y and we know from solving equations that if I know that 24 equals 4y to get y by itself I have to divide both sides by 4 and so this becomes six and equals y, so y equals six. Again, because I'm uh, writing it on the board, you should also be writing this in your composition book as notes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have two different similar polygons. These are trapezoids. So I have two trapezoids. One has a side length of six, and a top length of nine. And over here, I have one that has a bottom length of three and a side length of M. And I know they're proportional because I just told you they were. I know that they're similar, so that means they're proportional. So I've got to figure out how do I find the missing side. This one's kind of weird because they're turned differently. So I've got this one that's sitting on its long base and this one is sitting on its short base. We gotta figure out which sides are corresponding. And I'm gonna let those loops help me figure out, okay? So I'm gonna look at the ones first that have the, the sides that I know. The nine goes between the two loops and the two loops, okay? So on this trapezoid over here, do I have anything between the two loops and the two loops? Between the two loop and the two loop is a three, so I can set up the proportion nine over three. Again, because this side is between the two angles that are the same, and this is between those two angles that are the same. And so that equals, and now I have to set up the rest of my proportion, 9 over 3 equals what? Well, the 6 is between the 1 loop and the 2 loop angles, so the, we need to find something between the 1 and the 2, and between the 1 and the 2 is the M, okay? So the 6 is on the same trapezoid as the 9, so it goes on top, and the M goes on the bottom. Does it matter? Absolutely it matters. Okay, the numbers from the same triangle have to be in the same position, either in the numerator or in the denominator, but they have to be together. Okay, so now I'm gonna solve this, and again, I'm going to cross multiply and divide, so I could set it up as three times six equals nine times M, so that's 18 equals nine times M, and now to get M by itself, I have to divide both sides by nine, so those cancel out and I'm left with one M equals two. So I know that the missing side length is two. Now, if you wanna just do it in your head, three times six is 18 divided by nine. Three times six equals 18 divided by nine equals two and M equals two. I don't mind if you do it that way either. Sometimes you need to do it the long way because you get decimals and fractions and stuff and you need to use a calculator and it's easier to do it that way. Whatever is best for you. And for the last example, we have two kites, okay? Um, and we have some measurements on kites and we have two missing sides now. We have an R and an M. So I'm gonna give you just a couple of seconds to draw these two kites, making sure that you put the correct number of loops at each angle, and then we're going to um, figure out the missing sides. So go ahead and take a couple of minutes to draw these kites.
Okay, good. Maybe you had to pause it. Maybe you didn't. I don't know. But anyway, let's find out the missing side. Okay? So let's start with the M because it comes before R in the alphabet. So we'll just go with M. Okay? So I noticed that M is between the 1 and the 3 angle. 1 loop and 3 loops. Wait. Hold on just a second. But isn't this between the 1 and the 3 loops also? So if in the same uh, kite I have between 1 and 3 loops is 12, then what is this between 1 and 3 loops? It also has to be 12 because it's on the same kite and it's between the same angles and because we know that they're similar, then it has to be the same. So I'm just using clues in my pictures to figure out that M equals 12. Okay? So I can look at those. Look at, sometimes you can look at the same, but sometimes you can't. Now for R, we can't look at the same because this, the 8 is between 1 and 3 loops, but the R is between 1 and 2 loops. So we've got some differences there. So we've got to set up a proportion now. Okay? So let's look at the sides that we do know. Between 1 loop and 3 loops, we have 8. <clears throat> and between 1 loop and 3 loops, you have 12. So we're going to do 8 over 12 as our first part of the proportion. And we know that equals to R over 9 because R and 9 are the corresponding sides. So now I have 8 over 12 equals R over 9. So I need to solve this. Now I can cross multiply and divide. The first thing I can do is set it up so that 8 times 9 equals 12 times R, and 8 times 9 is 72, and equals 12R. Now to get R by itself, I have to divide both sides by 12. And so that's left with R and 72 divided by 12. We remember from our math facts equals 6. So R, the missing side, is 6. Now, if you want to do it the other way, you can just do 8 times 9 is 72 divided by 12, and that's where you get R equals 6 as well. Okay. Again, making sure to set up the proportion based on the clues that were given by the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides, and then once you have your proportion set up, you can find the correct answer. And now, here is the most important part of the video, and these are your practice problems. You've got two practice problems, so what I need you to do is to continue to do them on the same page as your notes, right under your notes, or if you need to go to the next page, you can go to the next page on your notes, but you need to write down these two problems and solve them. Number one is to just simply solve this proportion. What does R equal? Number two is to find the missing side W. So first you've got to set up the proportion, and then you have to solve for W. And so you're going to finish both of these problems, and then you're going to use your iPad camera to take a picture of the problems and submit it back to me through Edmodo, just like we talked about in class. Make sure that you take the picture of your practice problems as soon as you get finished with them, and then submit it back. Now, if you're confused, you can go back and watch the video again, if that will help you. If you've still got questions, you're welcome to email me, but whatever you do, take a picture. If you don't understand anything, take a picture and submit it so that I know that you actually watched the video and you tried. But I know you can write down something and solve these, okay?